We're happy to have you with us again where we're going to bring it home, take questions of homeland security and national security issues and help bring them home to you right where you live. And to do that today, we're talking with Dr. Joe Cerami. Joe is a professor at the uh, Bush School of Government and Public Service. Joe, thanks for being with us. Thank you for inviting me, Dave. Joe teaches national security and did a really interesting exercise recently with his students. Set it up for us, would you, Joe? The uh, scenario we had had seven parties playing in a scenario that was developed by the Army War College in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. The scenario involves a conflict in the South Caucasus, and that's the area that borders the region uh, where there was a recent conflict between Georgia and Russia. So we put students into a simulation where they're looking at an ongoing negotiation to end conflict between Armenia and Azerbaijan, two of the republics in that uh, part of the world. It uh, uh, has a long history of ethnic conflict. It's that area south of Russia, north of Iran, and west of Turkey. Now look, a lot of people do exercises in their classroom. What's different about this one? This exercise is important because it provides an active learning opportunity for our students. So the first part of it is it's a very complicated scenario, but it is a part of what our ongoing negotiation between the powers in that region. So there's a real world dimension to it that's very important. Uh, the second aspect of it is, is that we're a master's program in international affairs. Uh, our students who participated are in their first semester of study. So we're, we're reinforcing with them the importance of being able to communicate across cultures and negotiate some very tough and, and, and long-standing uh, conflicts in the world. And then the third part of it is we have a public service leadership program as part of the Bush School. And so this gives our students an opportunity to practice their communication skills, uh, to do some teamwork and team building, and uh, also to do time management because it was a very intense exercise. Well, Joe, it really was a very elaborate production. So why don't we take a look and see what it looked like? Uh, let's go to the videotape. Now we're here with Ambassador Larry Knapper of the Bush School, and uh, he's going to tell us what kind of instruction he's given these students to get them ready for this. Uh, first of all, Larry, tell us, you were an ambassador where? I was ambassador to the Republic of Latvia and then Republic of Kazakhstan. So you've uh, participated in negotiations like this before? I've participated in many negotiations like this uh, around the world. Did we usually win? Uh, we won our share. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, tell me, Larry, how do you prepare 50 students to be ready to take sides in, in seven di to uh, rep represent seven different countries? I think the, uh, one of the things that you want to do to prepare a group is to uh, help them understand that they're going to be operating with a no less than complete information under time pressure. And if they uh, get good at that, at uh, doing things under, under that kind of time pressure with less than a full deck of cards, if you will, uh, they'll be good negotiators. And one of the questions that always comes up is, in a setting like this, is this really realistic? Is this the kind of thing that you actually saw in reality? I, I think it's the closest that you can do in a, in a uh, uh, classroom setting or a, uh, an exercise setting to get to realism. I think you can really put people in a situation where they really have to think through these uh, issues uh, in a fairly realistic manner. What is it that the Army War College brought to this from your perspective that helped achieve that realism? Well, they, uh, what they do, what they have done is to put together a game that has now been played uh, probably dozens of times. And this is a powerful tool as well because you can compare outcomes and then see whether there tends to be a dominant outcome mm -hmm. and then where the outlying outcomes might be. And uh, so you can uh, actually uh, get a sense of how real policymakers uh, under, operating under these time, mm -hmm. time and information constraints would come out. Um, Ambassador, if the students learned what you taught them, what will happen today? What will be the outcome? Well, the outcome uh, will not be, uh, we're not, they're not going to solve the uh, Nagorno-Karabakh dispute, uh, which has now been uh, more than 15 years in the making uh, in a single day. But what they will come out with is a better appreciation of what it takes to be a good uh, negotiator and a strong diplomat in today's world. And uh, if they do it right without violence? Yes, uh, th that's uh, a no-fault, no-violence uh, setting. Thanks a lot, Ambassador. And now we're with Doug Campbell, who directs this program from the Army War College. Doug, thanks for being with us. Glad to be here. Explain to me exactly what is your title and what is it you do at the Army War College at Carlisle, Pennsylvania. I'm the director of the Center for Strategic Leadership, which is the Wargaming and Simulation Center for the U.S. Army War College. So you guys are running simulations and uh, war games almost constantly up there. That's correct. How is this uh, alike? What is it that you are bringing from your normal day-to-day -day activities to this? What have you done for this group? Well, the exercise that we're doing here is the exact same exercise that we conduct at the Army War College for the international officers. We have 42 international officers that are there during for our resident course. So we do this for them. We also export this to other 
universities and colleges around the nation. Is this uh, different in any way when you're dealing with university students as opposed to career military officers? Uh, this exercise is exactly the same as the, what we use. Uh, we have lots of other exercises that are much more military in nature mm -hmm. than this one is that we'll use for military officers. Now you were explaining to me that this exercise is not set in the present day. When is it actually set? Exercise is set in 2017. Uh, we always do that because uh, up until today the history is exact, but what we do by moving it to 2017 is we get to write the history of the world from now till 2017 so we can shape it so as to achieve the educational objectives we're trying to accomplish. So you can write an intervening history where you have conflict or don't have conflict and it lets you establish objectives, uh, use the scenario to establish objectives that what exactly what you want to teach. Right, to, to establish a, a program and to establish the issues that we want the students to have to deal with. And exactly what is it that you've done for Texas A&M here? Have you provided a person, several people? Well, we've got a team of six people down here. We brought the scenario material and we've got a team of about six people down here to help them execute the exercise. All right. Well, thanks very much, Doug. Appreciate being okay. with us. That was uh, Doug Campbell of the Army War College. Well, Joe, I've been working simulations and exercises for nearly 40 years, since I was about two years old. So, uh, let me tell you, this one was extraordinarily complex. What do you think the students got out of it? What did they tell you at the end they felt they learned? The important thing is that the, the simulation provides an opportunity for active or experiential learning. So it's one thing to be in a classroom or, or to read a book uh, where students are, are trying to understand the complexity of ethnic conflict in an area as difficult as the South Caucus. Uh, but even uh, the opportunity to uh, be there and to be able to put together a position for negotiation to vet it with your team members, to get agreement and consensus, mm -hmm. to go mm -hmm. forward, and then to have to say it in a, in a forum where people are watching you and observing your behavior adds a new dimension to it. And so that's why I like simulations. It really puts students into as close to the real world as we can get them. Now, you send students from here to the real world. You have people that graduate that go straight to the Department of State, Department of Defense. Do they tell you that this is like what they actually do for a living? They do. Uh, whenever we've done a lot of simulations, negotiation exercises, our ambassador Larry Knapper at the Bush School does the does a whole course on negotiation techniques, and the students typically will come back and, uh, especially on the exercises we do, uh, like this one, which we did at the Emergency Operations Training Center, uh, when their organizations want to train them and train their organizations down the line, they'll be doing simulations. So we feel like our students have a good head start in understanding how these uh, work and, and having had the opportunity to actually do one or two or several while they're here is an important developmental tool for us. Uh, Joe, we appreciate uh, you bringing it home to the students. Uh, we've been talking with Dr. Joe Sharami at the Bush School who brought the concepts of Homeland Security home to his students. We hope you felt like we, we uh, were able to bring the concepts from his course home to you and we hope you will stay with us for more on Bring It Home.